Biologists have been slow to pick up on something that information scientists now confirm. Every living cell contains thousands of tiny computers operating on the genetic and environmental information provided. What? No, nobody says that. Except for creationists. Okay, look, computers are machines that are designed to compute, especially ones that can take input, give out output, store data, and retrieve data, all by the means of strict logical functions. That's not how cells work. DNA directly translates to instructions on how to build biological mechanisms. No computation is involved. These things are not just like computers. They literally are computers. No, they don't compute anything. Most of us have our own electronic computers with these things inside. A hard drive. Large amounts of information are stored on magnetic media such as this. Do you have any idea what would happen if... Do you think? This is the perfect way to illustrate what a mutation does. No, not at all. The information on the disk of a hard disk drive is so dense that putting a magnet of just about any significant size would destroy a significant portion of the information. Mutations, on the other hand, either change, add to, or take away from existing genetic material, usually in a very small amount. In fact, the vast majority of mutations don't do anything at all. But changing a small amount of information stored on a hard disk could change things drastically. Let's say that I thought one of those software programs on the hard disk needed improving. Software programs? So I took this magnet and touched it ever so slightly on the hard drive in the exact spot where the program was located. Okay, so then let's try running the computer to see if the software has any new features. What do you think my chances would be? What if I tried it over and over billions of times? Would I ever get lucky? Is it even possible to help my computer with this technique? Okay, that obviously would not work because you are in fact destroying your computer, but that's not how mutations work. If the genetic information is a program, then that program can replicate and it can change as it replicates. Mutations are like when that program changes as it replicates. Physically affecting the hard drive is more like a catastrophic event. Mutations are damage. No. Informational noise. Not really. They are not constructive for electronic computers and not for biological computers either. Well, we don't have accurate representation of biological mechanisms within electronic computers. But your entire point revolves around completely misrepresenting the idea. Now that we've clarified important terms, let's find out exactly what the proposed evolution model actually is. How's this thing supposed to work? Let's find out where this staggering amount of genetic information comes from. It comes from mutations. Mutations can and do add genetic information. The proposed mechanism for generating new genetic information is three things. Natural selection operating on genetic mutations over millions and millions of years. When you put it like that, it makes you seem like you don't actually know what evolution says. Natural selection is just a phenomenon that affects evolution within a particular environment. It doesn't do anything to genetic information. Remember that natural selection selects between fit and unfit options. Weak things die, leaving the stronger organisms to carry on in the next generation. Again, that's only half of the story. Beneficial traits can help a species survive. So, where do the options come from? That is, the alternate information options. What? Well, they're provided by accidents. You know, mutations. Ignoring your deliberate, negatively connotative dictation, yes, they do come from mutations. Scrambling whatever information is already there, leaving a choice between a pre-existing genome and a damaged genome for natural selection to choose between. You mean changing the genetic information, thereby creating different traits. Common sense would suggest that damage generally results in a less fit genome. I guess, but perceived common sense isn't a scientific idea, and mutations aren't strictly damaging. But evolutionists are optimistic, and are counting on that rare case where damage will cause information to materialize out of nowhere just by getting extremely lucky during scrambling of the genetic coding. You know, it's really easy to demolish evolution if you create a straw man version of evolution. Now, to be fair, they're not asking for a lot of new information, just a tiny bit at a time. 
Evolutionists acknowledge that each tiny bit of new information is extraordinarily rare. Therefore, they say, that's why it takes millions and millions, even billions of years to happen in a macro kind of way. So you see that this is essentially a process of trial and error. Lots of trials and lots of errors. Well, that's actually correct. Wait, are you understanding it now? Are you coming around? The stubborn fact is that no instance of a mutation making information has ever been confirmed. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, I've looked into this a little bit, and science has long known about insertion and duplication mutations, both of which can occur in a large range of sizes. And this is really old news, so what you're proposing here is flat out wrong. Not even the tiniest increment. Do you remember showing us this image? You showed us this. You put this in your video. Never. Not once. Not never. For a long time. There's not a single field observation, not a single lab finding. None. Folks, adding brand new information to the genome essentially is evolution. So if there is no evidence that this has ever happened, then there's no evidence for evolution at all. Well, that's not true at all. Even if we didn't have much understanding of the way that works, there's lots of other evidence that points towards the reality of evolution. But notwithstanding that, there is evidence of genetic insertions and genetic duplications. Take a look at how the most important of all questions completely baffled him. Can you give an example of a genetic mutation or, or, or an evolutionary process which can be seen to increase the information in the genome? First of all, this is not the most important of all questions. Second of all, like I've said time and time before, you can't assume the motives behind somebody else's behavior, especially not without their input. Dawkins actually responded to this in his paper entitled The Information Challenge. He stated that his reason for pausing was because up until that point, he had not realized that his interviewers were simply creationists. He paused because he was debating whether or not he wanted to throw them out of his house. And after they stopped the camera, Dawkins had an argument with the interviewers. And even if he couldn't answer the question, that just means that he's not an expert on the matter. Dawkins doesn't actually have any authority in atheism or evolutionary science. But this should have already been telling by the fact that it obviously comes from an incredibly biased source. We'll break away from the interview there because, as you see, when Dr. Dawkins finally gathers himself to be able to continue the interview, his response is to tell us that we don't understand. Actually, his response didn't pertain to the question, which is kind of understandable because it is an odd question, and it did take him by surprise. And then he seems to grasp at excuses for why there are no such examples. He didn't state any such thing. He tried to explain it in the same way he explains the gradual slope of evolution, which I think is the wrong way to go about that question. It's interesting to look up this complete video on YouTube. You see all kinds of responses by evolutionists there, yet none of them answers the question at issue. Well, mine does. Insertion mutations and duplication mutations. Richard Dawkins himself posted a response. But in his post, he still does not answer the question, even after unlimited time to review it and post a proper answer. Actually, he does answer the question, I think. It's difficult to read, but he points to gene duplication. I'm not sure how well he talks about how the information changes to diverge from there, but even if he doesn't or can't answer the question, that doesn't mean anything. Maybe Dawkins isn't a perfect guy. So what? Now, as I said, evolutionists freely acknowledge that it would be extremely rare for a mutation to add new information to the genome. Like who? Who told you this? I feel like you're pulling this out of your ass. Okay, so if it is rare, how long would we expect to wait for information to spontaneously create itself by mutation? It's not creating itself. Natural processes are developing it. But it's essentially happening all the time. Much, much longer than millions and millions of years. In fact, much longer than billions of years. Um, citation please? There's not much more for me to say other than that's wrong. You know, it's interesting that evolutionists have come up with a very detailed timetable for the development of various creatures. For example, 400 million years ago were fish, 100 million years ago were dinosaurs, and so on. It's far more detailed than that. I mentioned earlier that there is no radiometric technique for dating old fossils. Which again is simply wrong. 
you can date the ground around the fossil, either by actual radiometric dating, which does work, or by identifying layers of strata. So then where did they come up with these time frames? I would think that if we know the odds of mutations making information... We don't. That's not something you can quantify. And using an estimate of the average time per generation, one could calculate the rate of evolution to find out how long all this would take. No, you can't do that. It's not quantifiable. Except there is a problem. The odds of a mutation making information has never been declared by evolutionists. This makes a calculation impossible. Well, I'm not surprised. They never had to, because that's not how science works. Which is exactly my challenge to my evolutionist friends. If you're going to pretend that there's a timeline, show me your calculation. Show me the numbers. Well, we can't do that because you're pulling this entire concept. Well, you know where you're pulling it from. You know what, come to think of it, you probably don't. There are none. Why? Well, for one thing, you can't divide by zero. And information scientists such as Dr. Donald Johnson tell us that the odds of anything random making new information is exactly zero. Well, that doesn't apply to what we're talking about now. Genetic differences aren't just anything random. It's run by natural processes. But quite frankly, what you just said doesn't actually make any sense. How can they be so sure? Because it is against a scientific law of the universe. What? I'm ending this episode on a cliffhanger because the next episode might give me a heart attack.